So I'm going to take you through Khan Academy Kids. You and your students have had this app on your um, iPads for uh, this entire year. The new and different thing is now they've created a way that you as a teacher can set up a class and give your students assignments. And I just cannot rave enough about this Khan Academy Kids app. Not a lot of people know about it. I will tell you it's best for pre-K, K and one, but I can see even second graders, especially your those students that need a lot of support could benefit from this. So I'm probably going to send this out to pre-K through second. Um, so let's, the first thing I wanna do is just show you from the student side. So the Khan Academy kids is just, it looks like, and it's from the Khan Academy that you're familiar with but um, it just looks like the little teal teddy bear. So I'm gonna click on it. And the first thing I've signed out of my teacher account, so this is a student account. And the first thing that they're gonna see is sign in with class code. So if I um, tap that, the kids are gonna have two different options. So depending on from your teacher side, if you would like to send them, and in a moment I'm gonna send you the teacher side uh, instructions. Mm -hmm. But this would be, uh, they can either scan the code or they could type in a code. So I already have a class set up. Since I'm using my iPad to record, I'm going to have to type the code. So I'm going to type in my code. Okay. Now, what I did is, is in here, I just set up um, 30 30 student accounts with numbers. You can do the same thing, or you might could put your kids' names, first names in there or something. Um, it asks you what grade you want to set your class up for. You guys would set your class up for whatever the, I'm assuming whatever grade, but then you can go in and edit it, and I'll show you the different grades. It, for your assignments, it doesn't really matter what grade the grade, whenever you put it in for a student, is actually going to be, um, they have an individualized plan in here, so that's going to guide them with whatever level, grade, general grade level they're on, and I'll show you that in a minute. So I'm just going to go in as student 30, and if I click on student 30, you can kind of see, and I do have the music turned off if you look at the bottom right hand corner because this music is really annoying. Um, so I turn it off. Um, from here, when you first look at it, the house is actually like their personalized learning path or plan. So if they just go in Hi, and push play, I'm Cody. And I'm not going to do too much in here because. Let's play with our friends in the kids' club. The assignments are Draw a line to connect the photos with the matching toys. The best part. Tap the so, green button when you're done. I think this is just Hi, sort of a warm-up. Hello! You match the photos and toys of my friends, Olo and Rhea. Draw a line to connect the photos with the matching toys. Okay. So I'm not going to do any more in this. In my opinion, I mean, this is fine. This is going to start out really, really simple, and then it, it Draw gradually line to builds the up to something a little harder. Um, personally, I like the library part, and if you look at the heart, it actually has 13, which means those are assignments that I've put in there for this class. So if the kids click on library, you can see the very first circle says assignments. And there are 13 in there, and I've already selected that. So these are all the assignments that I have um, given this class. And in a minute, I'm going to show you the teacher side of this. So the kids could go in and see, you know, for yesterday, and, and it'll, as, as it goes, it will have the date. So you can see Monday, May the 4th, I assigned these. Yesterday, which was what, the 20th? today yesterday was the 27th I signed these and that will eventually turn to May 27th but you can see that you know they go in if you want them to learn about specific things <clears throat> the one there isn't a lot of communication in here so really this is just you putting in the assignments they click on it they do it so for instance I'm gonna what is in. eight plus six they would go let's the use lesson. a 10 frame to figure it out 
not going to go through that. I'm just going to uh, click on a couple of them. Let's go to one syllable word. Spell the word bug. Okay. So you get the idea. Um, and up at the top, and you know, they can also, they have free reign to go to these other things, which may or may not be good. However, you could set up some type of a choice board or something where they can indicate to you when they finish their lessons for the day. Um, at the top, as a student, they can also go into like ABCs, so they have all of these, you know, there's a book for every single letter, there's tracing, there's beginning sounds, ending sounds, short vowels, I mean, it's just endless. Um, so many really good, short, quality lessons. It's got all of your numbers, so just very briefly, I'm just going to show you, and you really just need to get in here and look. Um, to see what all is offered. You've got subtraction equations, subtract three numbers, add and subtract, add more, um, place value, basic place value. In the reading, you've got actual uh, foundational skills. So you've got beginning sound, middle sound, sound sentence parts, verb endings, vowel sounds, um, blends, sight words. And you can, you can just see what I'm talking about. Early readers, stories. Um, there's nonfiction nature, so they could actually go in and read about a topic. Um, there's some National Geographic Young Explorer. So, I, you know, it's just so many really, really good. And the added benefit that they've added recently is the fact that you can assign what you want them to do. Prior to, I think it was two weeks ago, they just had free reign. They just went in and click, 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 and you had to make sure that they knew which one to click on. There was no way to assign. Now, I really like this app even more because of the ability to really say, hey, you have to go to your assignments and do the ones I assign you first, and then you can move on to something else. I love the logic part. So it's also, you know, that flexible thinking and uh, working on memory skills, strategy, measurement. Uh, you can see all of these amazing, just really good um, ideas. The books section, these are going to be more chapter books, early readers. You can kind of see there's some more nature books. Some of these are going to overlap. Number books, for those of you, if, you would, if you're introducing math concepts, there's no reason you can't introduce or um, explain deeper with a math book. Books are not just for language arts. Um, you can see there's animals, just wildlife, vehicles. The other thing that I like about this is you can reach some of these kids with their, you know, the personalized part of it. You can really reach their interests by allowing them to read a book. And then when they're finished, they have to, um, you know, go to Seesaw and record three things they learned with their voice. So kids that can't type yet are still able to convey what they're learning and what they're picking up from what they're reading. The videos I think would be really good for you guys. Again, since YouTube is blocked, it's amazing how you can get in here and they can watch a little short video that teaches them something that either introduces some a topic to them or maybe um, is a reminder or it's something that you just need them to be really secure on so if they are having a hard time with you know the letter Q they could you could assign several uh, books with Q you could sign the song with Q the letter Q um, just just for an example but lots of good stuff the create amazing again so they're gonna get in here and this this create part they've had some of these backgrounds but some of them are brand new so they could get in and actually respond and of course you've got your coloring pages um uh, i like the backgrounds so that they can actually pull up a background maybe that goes with what do you feel like drawing today that they have read and then they're going to create something that goes along with the story so that's, that's one thing. You've got all of these options. They can record, they can push play, and then you have access to go and look and listen to that from the teacher side. Um, I think these are stickers, yeah. 
So, you know, they could have the, uh, whatever the character is, they're going to get in there. And, I mean, it's just so great. I, I can't tell you how much I love this app. I know that sometimes I get excited over crazy things, but I just really want everybody to give this app. If you're pre-K through two, I really want you to give it a look. Um, I think for distant learning and even next year going into the classroom, this to me is a great partner um, for your seesaw class because all of these things they can, uh, you know, if they wanted to upload this to seesaw, they could, or if you can go in and look at it as the teacher. The offline part is pretty cool, especially for those kids that may have an iPad, but that do not have um, internet access. Of course, it's very, very limited. There's not a lot of offline activities. However, there are a few, and it might get them through, you know, the ones that temporarily aren't able to um, have access to some of the other ones due to internet connection. So, um, that, I've kind of taken you through the overview, is the student part. The next thing, uh, I'm going to stop the video and then when you come back on, you're going to see A, how to get your classroom set up and B, how to assign these and what it looks like from the teacher's side. Okay, so I have now, I, you know, you're, you will have to go in and create an account on your iPad. Just sign up and I think they do send you an email so that you can um, activate it. But then after that, you've just got, you know, this is going to show you, and I'll, let me sign out and I'll, I'll show you again. So this is what it comes up to. If you're gonna sign up, then you're just going to put your email address in there, uh, click next. I think they send you something. I, I've already used my both of my emails to create these, so I can't, um, replicate this but this part's pretty self-explanatory once you already have your account then you are you know you would just click this and I'm going to put in my account information okay so these are this is my class and then from here um, you can see these are all my kids, and, and I'll show you how you would put students in. So if I go to Miss Safford, and it wants to know, it's making sure that this is me, so they want me to put my password in. So this is the teacher dashboard. Um, the first bubble you see just says students, and I, what I did, because I use this for training, is I actually just went in and put all numbered students. It generates the icon on its own. I do believe you can change that icon. Um, so let me see, like if I click on number eight and I want to change the icon or the grade level, I can just go up here and click on the pencil here. I can change the grade level and you can see kinder, preschool, preschool, age two, first grade. And it is officially only for pre-K through first grade. However, again, if you have second graders that are struggling or that need lots of support I, I think this would be okay for them too you would just set it at first grade so i'm going to leave this at first grade again you can change you know, just put the kids first name in there that would be fine and then click okay so um if you needed to add students it's the same thing just click add student i'm going to name this uh student number 31 click next leave it at first grade click next and then now i have uh 31 students so th that's an easy way to just put the names in it shouldn't take you but five minutes literally to go through there and put first names in um the next thing that you're going to see are your assignments so if i touch assignments you can see these are the assignments and, and you're going to see that they are labeled with common core they do not have um, Texas states they don't have state standards so just know that that's fine I mean really and truly you're just going to be going in and finding the skills or the books that you want to assign and I'm going to show you how you're going to do these are just the ones I've already assigned you can actually go up and let's say you're looking for a math lesson you have addition subtraction operations and place value let's pretend that you guys 
you know, you've got kindergartners or, that are needing work on um, adding to 100. So when you click on this, it's going to bring it up. Uh, 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 big numbers need big brains! I'm Super Pet! Your students' assignments, you're just Let's add 30! So once you click the heart... And twi- How many blocks are and there? Letting you fast forward How many blocks? There's so 10 what they're gonna in do. the frame. So once I've clicked Drag the heart, yellow it blocks says assigned. To the so now whenever I go back... You can see, go back to my assignments, you see that these are the ones I signed yesterday, these are the ones I signed May the 4th, this is the one I signed today. Um, there's no reason that you can't reassign something, so depending on, you know, if, if you needed them to do it again, you could go in and do it again, but to me the best way is, instead of searching, is just going to be to go into each category uh, if I wanted to do a video, maybe we're working on CH. The I letter can see C. The CH. Oops, sorry. The letter C and then makes I can the, the heart sound. And, assigns it. and the. So now, whenever I go to my assignments, you see that it's there. I do want to take you up to the settings. I'm in the class settings right quick. So. Um, here, this is your class code. You can change your password if you want to. Change your class name. Whatever you want your name to be at the top is going to show. But if you look right down here, your preferences, you can see that if this is a teacher only device, I can turn that required password off. So I'm actually going to do that. Um, well, I thought that I had it off. Teacher only device, password not required on this device. Okay, I turned it off, on, which means it's not required. Here, I can turn that crazy, oh, that is off. I'm gonna turn that on. Fast forward button in lessons. Um, if you don't want that to show up in their uh, lessons, you want them to have to watch it, then you would just turn that off. And then show lesson standards. You know, your lesson standards, if you want that to show, you can. It's not gonna help us a lot because we don't use Common Core, so I would probably turn that off. Um, so anyway, you can just see, let me see what this question, this is the teacher guide. Okay, so if you click the, the teacher guide, you can see it's gonna take you through um, how to use that. So that kind of just takes you through the basics how you create assignments for your kids. It's pretty short and sweet. There are not a lot of bells and whistles. They just added this ability to give them assignments or to give them topics to see. Um, so, you know, that it's just something that I think that makes this app even better for, for really primary age kids. So that's all that I have for that. Hopefully you guys find this useful. And if you have further questions or you're trying to do something, please email me or send me a message through Teams and I will investigate it or help you get it set up, either one. Thanks guys.